the mathematical thing that I want to go over, which is going to become important as we do more probability calculating, is factorials. A factorial, again, probably something you've seen before. Seven factorial, for example, is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And I am not going to calculate that out. I will not calculate this. And I encourage you not to calculate factorials either, unless you need to. The factorial that throws people off a little bit is zero factorial is defined to be one. It's a little bit strange in the sense that zero factorial, you think of it as actually we're not multiplying anything together because the definition of the factorial is that we go down to one. And then it's something called an empty product. And when you have an empty product, that's nothing being multiplied together, you define it to be one. The moral of the story is you don't have to be able to tell that story that I just told you about an empty product, but you do need to recognize that zero factorial is one. And I want you to recognize that it does have a mathematical meaning. One factorial is one, two factorial is obviously two times one, which is two and so on. When you are working with factorials. These are going to come up in things such as permutations and combinations. We might end up with expressions that look like this. We might have 5 factorial times 3 factorial over 8 factorial. So we might have to calculate something like this. And instead of torturing yourself and calculating 5 factorial and then calculating 3 factorial and multiplying this all out, it is good to recognize that there's a lot of cancellation that goes on in these expressions. I'm going to write it out here, but when you get better at this, um, it's okay to just do the cancellation. So 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And then 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. When we do something like this, obviously the 1s don't even matter when you're multiplying by 1. Like, that doesn't change the value. So if we're trying to simplify an expression like this, well, the 5 factorial has 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 in it. And the 8 factorial also has that as part of it. So if you have something like 5 factorial over 8 factorial, all of the things in the 5 factorial are going to straight up cancel with the stuff in the 8 factorial. So those 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 cancel with this. And then you can just keep taking this further. Um, obviously, the natural thing to do would be to cancel the 3 times 2 with the 6 and just get rid of that. But sometimes you don't have something as nice as that. So I could say, oh, well, I have a 2 here. Okay, let's remove the 2 and just knock the 8 down to a 4. So I can just take the 2 out of the numerator and take a 2 out of the denominator. And then the 3, I can say, okay, let's take out the 3 and also divide the 6 by 3 and end up with a 2. So realistically, if I want 5 factorial times 3 factorial over 8 factorial, we can look at that as 1 over and then um, whatever 28 times 2 is, 56. 